Hello ladies and gentlemen, today I'm very excited to present you the Thrustmaster F-18C Hornet HOTAS add-on grip, licensed by Boeing. Thrustmaster has sent me this grip for a fair review with no strings attached. Right off the bat, I was very impressed by the unboxing presentation of this stick. They really wanted to make you feel like this grip was going to be an experience, and, well it should be, since this grip retails at $229.99. It's meant to be used with the Thrustmaster Warthog base and the Hotas Cougar, which, obviously, are sold separately. So, let's see what's inside. Well, we obviously have the wonderful stick itself. For those of you who are experienced with the Thrustmaster Warthog Hotas, this grip should feel very similar, as it has the same level of detail put into it as the Warthog did with its metal design. But uh, we'll get to all that in a second. On the inside section of the front cover, you get two pieces of information. The first being the user manual. The usual sort of information can be found here, and right off the bat, I was very happy that they included which buttons are what based on their number designation, which should take the guesswork out of mapping buttons. The next two pages show you the description of the buttons as they would appear in the real thing. But it's at the bottom of this page that it's worthy to note this section, which warns that on the HOTAS Cougar, the CMS push button 19 will be non-functional, since it was never featured on the Cougar. On the second piece of information is a quick installation guide, and... Oh my... Alright, seriously? So you mean like this, huh? Well, alright, if you insist. Moving on to the features of this grip, we have an 8-way trimmer hat, a 4-way plus push hat, a weapon release push button, a Reese push button, a plastic wheel which acts as a 2-way button with a push button function, a 4-way weapon selector switch with a push function. In the back, we have a dual stage trigger, a nose wheel steering pinky button, and an autopilot disengage paddle switch. So, let's install it with the Warthog base. Oh, uh, whoops, <laughs> gotta follow instructions. While using the grip with the Warthog base and launching DCS F18, I noticed that all the necessary buttons were automatically mapped. Now, the only real difference I saw was the weapon selector switch, which was mapped to the CMS controls. Additionally, the weapon selector down switch was also incorrectly mapped to the wheel push function. So when you do get this and plug it in, just double check that everything is as it should be. Now I think that this mapping issue will be fixed soon, but I also did not update my drivers for the Warthog, as the manual suggests to do, so that might also be the reason for this. Since Verpal's Warbird mechanical base is meant to work with the Thrustmaster Warthog grip, I checked to see if it worked with it right out of the box, and I am happy to report that it works flawlessly in this configuration. Alrighty, let's talk ergonomics. This grip is of course a life-size replica of the McDonnell Douglas F-18C flight stick, which means that it's as close to the real deal as possible. However, there were some adjustments made to the stick we're getting for physical reasons. One of these would be the ABS body on the head of the Hornet grip. This was done in order to maintain an optimal center of gravity. Surprisingly, this grip, which is made out of metal, weighs 1.8 pounds, which is very similar to the weight of the real F-18 stick, which apparently is made out of resin. Another notable difference would be the addition of this plastic wheel, which honestly is a positive and welcoming inclusion. Finally, the paddle switch is not actually attached to the grip on the real deal, but for obvious reasons they added it to the front, which too is a great addition. Okay, great, but uh, how does it feel? Well, right off the bat I can tell you that this is a very solid build. It's just a hair lighter than the Warthog grip by 0.4 pounds to be precise, which means it's plenty heavy and durable. Just placing your hand on this stick tells you that this is a quality product. You really are getting your money's worth. However, ergonomically speaking, things start to go a tad downhill from here. Take a note at how wide the top of this grip is in comparison to, oh, let's say the Warthog grip. Or even the Verpal's T50 grip. Due to this, the button spread is very wide which makes it a bit odd to easily transition from one button to the next, unless you situate your hand very high on the grip. 
But by doing so, you are now unable to reach the weapon selector switch. In order to do so, you now have to slide your hand down to grip in order to be able to manipulate it. Additionally, taking a look at the back, notice that I am unable to reach the pinky button at all. If you take a look at other grips, like the Warthog stick, the pinky button is placed along the main body of the grip. On the F-18, the button was offset to the side, making it near impossible to reach without having to move your hand down, which I found to be rather annoying. Not to mention that the paddle switch is stupid short, like way short. The easiest way to manipulate these controls would be to slide your hand down and let your pinky manipulate the paddle switch and have your ring finger press the pinky button instead. It is also worthy to mention that there is no platform to rest your hand on this grip at all. This made it a bit more difficult to use while on a desktop without having anything to support my hand in the air. It got to the point where I quickly drafted this wrist rest and 3D printed myself a quick snap-on prototype. Ah, much better. Now, please, don't get me wrong. None of these issues are Thrustmaster's fault. They are inherent design... flaws? Choices. Inherent choices made by McDonnell Douglas. And I'd like to have a chat with the chap that designed it. After all, there may be some legitimate reasons for these design choices. Who knows? All I can say is that it made it slightly more difficult to use than the Warthog grip that I was so used to at this point. Let's talk buttons, as they feel very distinct and seem to have some character to them. For example, the sensor select switch has a very nice click that you both hear and feel as you press through the different actions. The same can be said for the weapon selector switch, although I found trying to press the switch to the left was sometimes difficult due to the horizontal grooves engraved to the button that made my thumb slide across it rather than actually press it to the left, but I've only found that to be a problem some of the times. The best way to utilize the button with your thumb is to either slide your hand down the grip or to simply tilt your hand back, which will allow you to manipulate it easier. In the back, the dual stage trigger was actually slightly redesigned from the ward high grip. The first stage goes through quickly, while there is a noticeable tension before being able to go through to the second stage. This choice was deliberate in order to stop accidental second stage triggers when tensing up too much. With the paddle switch, you can also feel the click unlike the Warthog grip, which has no indication of it being activated. This paddle also has a much shorter travel distance, but it is, as stated earlier, vastly too short for my comfort. So um, I think I'm going to 3D print a little extension for myself later on. I put the grip through the test by having it on my desktop first. I ran through some scenarios and familiarized myself with the controls after making some changes in comparison to my Thrustmaster grip. It only took a few minutes before I was essentially tuned with the grip and everything finally clicked together. And I gotta say, it feels pretty darn great. I didn't even notice any of the initial ergonomic gripes I had, with the pinky button and paddle switch being the only exceptions. Those two really do require my hand position to change in flight to access them. Lastly, I decided to check out how this feels with a desktop mount. I used the Verpal mount with the Warbird base for ease of use. I have to say that this was by far the best configuration for this grip, to get around any ergonomic gripes that I may have about this stick. It felt great to be able to rest my hand on my thigh, and it was an overall joy to use it like this. Alrighty, so let's draw some conclusions on this grip. Personally, I really like it. I honestly cannot fault Thrustmaster for what McDonnell Douglas did when they were originally designing it ergonomically. Some of you may not even notice any of the things I've mentioned at all, especially if you're transitioning from grips other than the Warthog Hotas. Thrustmaster did a fantastic job replicating this, and they made sure to keep their standards, accuracy, and durability going from their previous Warthog project. So if you're looking for an upgrade, this is certainly worthy of your consideration especially if it aligns with your F-18 addiction. Plus, let's not forget that the upcoming DCS F-15E module uses almost an identical grip to this one. Hint, hint. So, I hope this review was somewhat helpful for you guys. Check the link in the description to pre-order yours today. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some freedom to spread. Oh god, I love this thing. <laughs>